Shalom. Wait for my uh, brother to come on. Y'all gonna find this interesting. It's part two from uh, last night, actually. With identifying uh, Israel. Okay, just came on. So let me bring him on now. I said 5.15, of course, is, um, 5.20 something. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Let me uh, open up by saying, man, all praise to the Most High, that uh, that uh, everybody is tuning in on this live, that he gave us breath and eyes and ears to see broadcast. And let's pray for our loved ones that's, uh, that's ill and that's not ill, and pray for our loved ones that's uh, past, that we know personally, friends, relatives, and also pray for the ancient ones it's written in the book. You know, and uh, the truth is saying we're supposed to love our brethren. And truly, that is our objective, is to love our brother and to serve the Most High with all our due diligence. So with that, I'm going to say shalom to everyone again. Uh, my name is Kwanaf Yahweh, Ban Yasha Allah. Uh, I had a brother introduce himself again. Look, before you introduce yourself, King, I want to open up and say this. Is that if anyone says anything that's offensive, it's not meant to be offensive, okay? It's only meant, we're not, we're not trying to be offensive. We seek in truth. We seek in truth and knowledge and understanding. Um, I noticed a brother blocked somebody one day. And I looked on my Facebook this morning, and my whole Facebook was gone. Facebook actually <laughs> deleted my whole page. Uh, so, of course, I went in and asked, like, what the hell is going on? And they said, I violated everything. You know, you may have a violation on this. They said, I violated everything. So, of course, I grieved it. And I took out information. Hurts, but we also know information is power. And only thing that can stop the truth, the truth, is the most high. Man can't stop it. Beast, woman, child, or who y'all like to call the devil, can't stop the most high. Truth. So you can uh, like it, accept it, believe it or not. Truth is coming out. Uh, the topic is going to be dealing with South America in relation to Israel. The people of Israel, the people here today, and dealing also in uh, ancient language. So, brother, you introduce yourself again, and uh, I turn the floor over to you again. Okay, so uh, my name is Yokanan. Uh, my, what my full name would be Yokanan Asai Yechai. That's where I go by. Um, but most people just call yes. me Brother Yokanan. Um, yes. I uh, come from Houston, Texas. And I've been in this truth for 17 years now. Studying, researching, traveling, trying to make tangible this knowledge for everybody. Uh, I'm a writer. I'm a professional educator. I'm a world traveler. And I am a student of the Hebrew language. I actually teach a course on Sundays in Hebrew for those that want to learn Hebrew, conversational Hebrew. So uh, the language is really important. So good. Now, so we, we have some of the brother background. And I noticed uh, through the months or even in my years in this knowledge that people like to throw out words and talk, joke, and laugh. The scripture in Proverbs says, how long will you simple ones love simplicity, right? And scorners uh, like to delight in their scorning. Delight mm -hmm. means happy and joyful and scorning another brother or sister. And they will use the word pseudo or sodo, pseudo, right? And pseudo or pseudo only means not genuine, it's shame, it's false, and it's unreal. Uh, facts. Facts mean knowing 
to be true and historic. Okay? So we're going to deal in knowing truth and historic and hands-on. That's what facts is. Seeing with your eyes, hands, hands on. Pseudo is blabbing at the mouth, talking gyra, and never do a video or never write anything, don't do anything, and just blabber. So this brother is going to bring out what we like to call facts. All right? <laughs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> so, brother, you can open it up where you want, whatever you want to start, where you left off if you want to deal with the so-called H word here or the so-called Indian here. Uh, and also the languages. So you started off, and then I'll land me back on the questions. Absolutely. All right. So um, <clears throat> I'm a I'm a teacher, correct? And so Houston is Houston is one of those cities that's unique because of our proximity to Mexico. So uh, if you go to New York, you see mostly Jamaicans. Uh, Puerto Ricans, uh, Dominicans, you know, and I mean, New York is known for Puerto, uh, the Puerto Rico Day Parade and everything, you know. Texas is, well, let's go to California. You go to California, it's a lot of people from California that are from Mexico. You go to Florida, there's a lot of people in Florida that are from Cuba and Haiti. You have a lot of people in there. You have a little Cuba, a little Haiti, everywhere else in, in, in Florida, Miami especially. Houston is a unique city in that most of the Hispanic people from Houston are from Mexico, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, and the Central American region. You know? So okay. as, an, as an ESL teacher... These kids come to me, and I'm supposed to, over the course of the school year, teach them the English language. So I have 150 students, all of which are from Nicaragua, Honduras, uh, Guatemala, etc. And you, you were mentioning it yesterday after our interview, or when you were talking to the other brother, and you were saying that you can tell when somebody has when somebody is the product of a hispanic and an and a israelite parent right, right. you can right. tell how they look and you might not be able to tell okay maybe uh her maybe her mom is white or hispanic but you can definitely see the israeliteness of these people that are of the mixed sort and and i understand what 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 one West philosophy is of there's no such thing as mix, and we can go with that if you will. That you know you are whatever your father is, that's great, you know. But it, it's it's clear that they have Israelite complexion, they have a semi Israelite kinkiness to their hair, they have an Israelite phenotypic construct to their to their bones. And like Blake Griffin, they have a manner or a spirit in them that is reminiscent of the Judah that we all know and love. Right. So they are they are quite clearly mixed in some ways. Right. Now you can always say that you know you are what your father is. That's fine, you know. But among my students, I mean, I'm, I'm interacting with you know people from Guatemala and El Salvador. And I'm thinking to myself, how could these people be Israel? They don't fit any of the curses. Right. They're so, now, supposedly, Trump is hating and railing on these people. That's not stopping them from coming into the borders. That's not stopping them from coming into the borders. You know? So you, you go around, they have their own, they have their own businesses. They 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 look out for each other in, in the neighborhoods. They're they're taking over certain neighborhoods that were once black. Now they're all Hispanic. You know, uh, I don't see how you could be how your parents could be grass cutters, 
but you're rolling around in a seventy, eighty thousand dollar, you know, oh. Ford F three fifty. Yeah. Yep. But your mom and daddy could grass, you know. Right. Unskilled labor, but they're making money that we don't have, you know, making money. Their money is showing forth in ways that money in the black community is just non existent. You know, right. that don't sound like a cursed people. And then can I lay me back, can I sure. lay me back on that real quick? Uh, what he said is, is fact because we were coming back from the uh, uh, store one day and I see a couple of uh, 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 H out there, H people out there, and they have uh, uh, four F 150s, uh, 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 Lexuses, you know, and it's not jealousy because we have these cars too. Don't get me wrong. You say we have these cars too, but we it's hard for us to go someplace outside of this country and get that type of uh, wealth, you know, like mm -hmm. running into right. Babylon, running into Babylon to be successful. Wait, I, I turn the back to you. No, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, we have to go to four years of college and get degrees and, and, and work for the jobs and everything and work double shifts to get these things. Right. And, and they come right. with no, not even speaking the language of the, the, the country they're in and can get these things, you know. Um, it, it just, it, it doesn't make any sense how these people could be Israel, you know. Um. So in my classroom, I have some, some students that are from Honduras. And when, when, you, when you look at these countries, because one of the first assignments we do every year is a getting to know you assignment, where I talk about where I'm from and, and they're supposed to make presentations about where they're from. And so I'm always asking them, because these people might be one year, eight months, you know, three months, some of them are fresh in the country, still waiting on paperwork. And you ask them, well, how many, I mean, how many people in your country are of this ethnic group? Or how many people are this? And then you, you, you ask them and they say, oh, well, there aren't, there aren't any African Americans or, or, or Negroes, Morenos and in, in, in Moranos in, in this part of the, uh, in this part of the, of the country. And right. they're like, oh, well, you, you got to go over to this one city into this one area of the whole country and you have some Moranos in that area or some Negritos in that area, you know? Uh, like, for instance, where, where, where Dr. Sebi was from. He was from right. a place in Honduras called La Ceiba. And La Ceiba is on the Caribbean coast. And there are a lot of people from, like, the Caribbean in La Ceiba, and these are mostly uh, Caribbean, Afro-Caribbeans that have left the Caribbean countries because they're looking for work. And they come to Honduras because they can get work in the resorts. Um, but there is also what they call an indigenous black nation in Honduras called the Garifuna. And the Garifuna have their own language and they're ostracized, they are servantile, and they fit about, I mean, they, they fit Deuteronomy 28 like, like you wouldn't believe. And they're called the Garifuna in Honduras. They don't speak Spanish. Garifuna. Now, let me, let, me, let, me, yeah. let, me, let me say something about, I don't, I'm not going to keep cutting you off. I want everybody to listen. He said, uh, the Gaddy Fuma. Okay. okay, hold on. People call me while I'm live. The Gaddy Fuma and people that come here, you, they never speak of the black people there. Never speak of the black people there that's in their country. Never. It's all about them. All about them. And they never speak of them. But he knows about it. And they call it Gaddy Fuma and don't speak Spanish. So uh, I just wanted to just put it out there to put on your mind. Go ahead, brother. Slotty, go ahead. Go ahead. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, I'm here. Okay, look. Okay. Go out okay. and come back so, so, in. Go out and come back in. I'm going to take you out and bring you back. Okay. All right. Yeah, see, somebody called my phone. I don't know if that was the problem. I don't know. Oh, Tracy. Yeah, call her and tell her I'm... I'm I'm sorry, everybody. Trying to get the brother back on. It's coming back on, I believe. Oh, she's a, she knows she's on there. She's on. All right, bringing the brother back on. The Fuma people. That's I believe was in Costa Rica. All right, I'm back in. So mention that last part again when they did not talk about and the people that's there. Okay, so the, these people in Honduras that live in this little coastal town called La Ceiba, they're called the Garifuna. And these Garifuna are foreigners or, or strangers in Honduras. They have one little small community and they do not speak a Spanish language. They don't speak a dialect of Spanish. Um, the, 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 the language they speak is more like a, uh, what, what's the word? I can't, I don't, I don't want to make the word up. Um, it's, it's like a, well, put it like this. It, it's an African dialect. It's an African dialect. Now, I, 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 they, she's, she, she told me where it was from. I'm trying to remember where she, because she spoke it for me. And she's in my class, one of my students. And when she spoke it for me, you had Hispanics in the classroom that were like, what is she saying? What is she doing? And I'm like, well, she's speaking Gadifuna. Have you ever heard of Gadifuna? And I'm like, that don't sound like nothing we've ever heard before. So even the, the Hispanics in the class, like, because I'm gonna tell you, the, the guys from El Salvador, they speak Spanish. The guys from Guatemala speak Spanish. The ones from Mexico speak Spanish. But they can tell the different dialects. And they can tell just from the Spanish you speak which Latin American country they come from. Now, okay. f for you and me, it, it all sounds like Spanish. But for them, because they're native, they can tell this person is from Guatemala because we don't say this word in, in Mexico. Right. right. You know different what I'm saying? Dialects. Different dialects. Different dialects. Right. right. And so and so when she spoke Gadifuna, everybody was like, well, Miss, well, what is she saying? What? And she has to now teach the whole class what the Gadifuna are because they're like, they're like 2% or less than 2% of the population in the city of La Ceiba. And I mean, as far as the percentage of African or, or Afro Negroid people in Honduras, they're like 0 0.008. I mean, it's, it's a really small percentage of black people in right. Honduras. And, and yeah. every country has that same makeup where it's mostly mestizo that's what it says mostly mestizo and then you have the european and then in most instances the indian and the chinese even outnumber or the i'm sorry the the well indian and arab indian arab and chinese outnumber the african populations in most of those countries and places where that the population does not outnumber African is like Brazil and Peru and Guyana, like Georgetown, Guyana, because those are places where there was a heavily influx, a heavy influx of slave ships. Right. Right. Georgetown, Guyana is named after King George. He was the main British person, the main king, the main aristocrat in Great Britain that was that owned slave ships. Right. That's why in all of South America, everybody speaks Spanish. Brazil, they speak Portuguese, because that was Portuguese territory. And in Ghana, they speak English. 
You can go to South America right now. Everybody in Ghana is going to speak English. Mm. Because mm. it was a British territory. So I know of a group of Hebrews who are from Ghana. They are living in Israel. And during the 80s, there was this crisis going on in Israel. And they ended up going back to Ghana, except for a few of their children. They stayed in the, 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 the schools that we have in Demona. They stayed in their schools. And so the rest of the family left and went back to Ghana. There are people right now in Guyana that are Hebrews that have their own village. Be and, and you have Hebrews like that waking up all over South America. And these are not Hispanic Hebrews waking up. These are Afro Hebrews waking up. Wow. See that? See that? So this is not pseudo, right? Because we have evidence on this. Uh, and this is part of the curse. Not right now. This is part of the curse, you know, because they say we'd be few in numbers, you know, so uh, that that goes in on the curse. If you uh, if you like, you can go a little bit on the language if you're not finished on that uh, in that area. Sure. So so uh, let, let me let me tell you something about language and I'm going to give you an example. English, we use English and we write in the Latin script. You have to understand that when you're talking about language, the language and the script of the language are two different things. So Spanish and French also use the Latin script, right? Um, Kiswahili is in a completely different language family, and it uses the Latin script. Um, Vietnamese. Tagalog out of uh, the, the Philippines, Tagalog, they use the Latin script, but it's a completely different language. So I could give you some Vietnamese in, in writing, and you could identify this is a V, this is a H, this is an O, you know, you might even be able to sound out some of the words, but those words are going to make completely no sense to you because you don't speak Vietnamese. Oh, okay. You understand? Oh, okay. So when you look at Middle Eastern languages, like Farsi comes from uh, Iran, um, Kurdu or, or, or Pashto comes from Iraq, you know, um, you have Farsi, Urdu, Urdu is like Northern Iraq, right? Pashti is Southern Iraq, right? You have three or four different languages that I just mentioned and they all use the Arabic script. Every last one of them uses the Arabic script. And because you and me, we don't know any, we don't know any Pashto, we don't know any Urdu, we don't know any Farsi, and we don't really know any Arabic. When we see those four languages written out, they all look like Arabic. Okay, right, now, right. Now, somebody, so, somebody who's familiar with Pashto, he might see some Urdu, and be able to do the same thing. He might be able to look at the words and, and identify the characters, maybe even sound them out. But if he doesn't speak the other language, he's not. He's going to say, this language is in Arabic script, but the words don't make any sense. Right. So when you, when you apply that same principle to the Paleo-Hebrew, what you got to understand the ancient Hebrews were not the only nation of people that used the Paleo-Hebrew alphabet. Can you repeat that again? <laughs> the ancient Hebrews were not the only nation of people that used the Paleo-Hebrew alphabet. Other right. nations also used that alphabet. The Phoenicians created the Paleo-Hebrew alphabet. We adopted their language alphabet to make our language. The Greeks adopted the Phoenician alphabet to make their language. So alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, all that stuff, that's not Greek. That is Phoenician. Whoa. Whoa. And, and that's know. also what you get with the, right, that's what you get with the Hebrew. And, and, and Greek is alpha and Hebrew is aleph. Then you have bet and beta. 
Gimel and, G and Gamma, Delta and Dalit, Eta and he Eta and Hey. These 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 letters were created by the Phoenicians and then spread around. So when you look at these Hebrews who say, uh, you know, well that's not Hebrew or this is Hebrew, my question is, well, do you speak Paleo Hebrew? And how can you? T what's this word? And what's that word? And what's this word? And, and make what you're seeing written in the Paleo Hebrew. Tell me it makes sense when you when you transliterate it into English or into modern Hebrew, because you might be seeing Akkadian, because the Akkadians did not have their own alphabet. They used the Greek alphabet or the Hebrew alphabet, or it might be in uh, Aramaic, or it could be in Sumerian. They had their own alphabet. You know what I'm saying? So. You so when when you have these Hebrews and they see these artifacts around the world and these artifacts are written in Hebrew or or these artifacts are using the Paleo Hebrew alphabet, that's great. But is that Hebrew? And because you don't know Hebrew and you don't know what language that they're speaking in, or you can identify as the characters the same way you can look at Vietnamese and see, okay, I know that alphabet, but I don't really know what they're saying. Right, right. Okay, so let me say this. Now, I led up to that because we want to get in the language part far as what's written on walls, right, and also identify as many of the so-called tribes that we can in North and South America because a lot of people just want to put a, 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 um, a, a paintbrush over everybody, just like you said about the Hebrew right. and so forth. So in relation to the language that's written on the walls, in relation to the language and dealing with certain certain people, how can we connect connect it? As far as okay, that, answer that question, question again. All right, hold on, and messing with us again. All right, as far as like the language uh, and what you broke down, can we identify certain certain people with these languages and knowing who they are? Far, you know, and where they come from, they bloodline through these languages. Can we deal with that and also with certain writings on the wall that's here in the so-called Americas? So, so when, when you when you look at language, language has uh, what they what linguists what linguists call a life cycle. Languages have like like for instance, in human beings, we have a what? We have a birth. We have a developmental stage, we have our adult stage, and then we have a demise, right? Languages can also do the same thing. Languages have a developmental stage or a creation stage, a developmental stage, a life cycle, and then they go extinct. So if you take a language like Spanish, for instance, we know that those H people, as you say, they they did not speak Spanish originally. Spanish, right. in, in and of itself, Spanish is a new kid on the block. You know? And, and, and what, what you find is, I work for a Houston Independent School District. The school district has said this, we want all of our kids that are Spanish speaking to learn English, and we want all of our English, native English speakers to learn Spanish because of our proximity to Mexico. But they came up with, they, they, there was a dilemma. And here was a dilemma. The Spanish they're speaking in Mexico and in Honduras and all these other countries is not pure Spanish. So what they did was, they had to go all the way to Spain and they had to bring teachers from Spain to teach Spanish because what the Hispanic kids here was learning is not pure Spanish. So, and don't forget that, I just want to throw this in there real quick. So we have a people who can come illegally, rent, come illegally, get a driver's license, come illegally, get food stamps, come illegally, and get uh, get welfare, come illegally and vote, come illegally, come illegally, and not only go to school, 
but get special privilege with teachers that's hired outside the country to teach them the dialogue. The, Wait, to to Wait, teach them, by the time they graduate, they're supposed to be fluent in the English language. Yes. All of the resources go to these kids to help them be meaningful contributors to American society. So people don't yeah. think we hating? That's wonderful. Everybody needs to be educated. That's beautiful. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so, so that, that raises the question, if these people are not on, speaking, though. if these people are not speaking pure Spanish, the question becomes, what then are they speaking? Right, right. <laughs> there we go. And, and, and the, go ahead, Slack, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. no, go ahead. No, the, the, answer, the answer to that question is very simple. They are speaking a bastard language. They're speaking a mixture of Spaniard, European dialect with their native, natural, indigenous language. And it's so not Hebrew. Other, so in other words, listen up, listen up. So in other words, we can call them Jewish. Yes. Right? <laughs> in other words, <laughs> we can call them Jewish, right? Yes. Some kind of like the language, but not quite the language. You understand? But yeah, go right. ahead, brother. Let's get it. Yeah. That is, that, is the, that is the main point of the whole program that HISD has done in Houston because they want their people to, I, I guess they got in trouble or somebody brought it to their attention that you're hiring all these Mexicans to teach the ESL classes, but the majority of our students are coming from Honduras and, mm -hmm. and, and El Salvador and Guatemala. So right. you can't hire a bunch of Mexican teachers to teach people from the other Spanish speaking countries because the dialect is different. But and the only the same people, so they're against their own people. I thought all of them were the same right. people, but they're against right. their own people. Yeah, go ahead. And the, the, the only dialect that all of these people have in common is the Spaniard Spanish. Same daddy. Yeah, same daddy. And, and that's why they're hiring people from Spain to come in and teach Spanish because they're trying to unify all of this Honduran Spanish, Puerto Rico Spanish, Mexican Spanish. It's all a bastard language. Now, if if these guys were Hebrews, if they're if 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 all that stuff was Hebrew, you, what what you would hear is you would hear a mixture of Spanish and something that we could identify as Hebrew, but you don't recognize any other language because they're not using any Hebrew. Now, if they I were Hebrews, I'm saying real quick. I want everybody to understand what we're leading up to because you're breaking down the language. I know. I know y'all follow this for new people that's coming on. He's leading up to identifying people. And also, I don't know if you want to go to this this part right away as far as what uh, they leaving clues on the wall and travel, or you want to hit that mm -hmm. third? You want to hit, hit, hit like like the, the rocks they find with writing and the clues because of the tribal travel, or you want to finish up? Finish up what you're going, then we go to that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna get to that too. I'm gonna get to that too. Um, but, no, it's, it's it's fine. It's fine. Um, one of the one of the points that I really wanted to, to to stress is that in a language life cycle, you can you can find a person's original history from the language they speak. Even even something as simple or or as as modern day as all of these different Hebrew Israelite organizations, I can get I can meet a Hebrew Israelite on the street, and I can talk to him for five minutes, and I can tell you after five minutes after five minutes which Hebrew school of thought that person comes from, mm -hmm. just based on the words he uses. You understand? I can say, okay, this guy is one West or, okay, this guy is like Christian Hebrew, kind of like, you know, IOG or, 
or one of the mother camps, right? Because they're going to use a certain vernacular or a certain language, and, and I can because I'm a because I'm a student of language, I can trace back where he comes from, and I can and, and then I could I could change my dialect to match his dialect. You know what I'm saying? So if if you're one West, guess what? I'll start using one West terminology. That way we relate. If, if, you, if you are non-Messianic, I could talk non-Messianic if you want. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so let, 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 me, let me clarify this uh, one more way because it's important that we understand that if these Hispanic people were Hebrews, they would be speaking a mixture of the colonial language of Spanish and Hebrew, and you don't find them speaking Hebrew at all. Now, I'm going to give you a perfect example. We have this word that we say as black people, ain't. Like, I ain't going to the store, or I ain't finna do that. Now, if you, if you look back to where ain't, the word ain't comes from, A-I-N apostrophe T, it has no it is not a conjunction like cannot, can't, or do not, don't, or would not, won't, wouldn't. It's not a conjunction. It's not a contraction. There is no similitude of ain't in the English language anywhere, point blank, period. But there is a similitude of the word ain't in Hebrew. And it, it comes from the Hebrew ain, which means do not or will not or have not. So, for instance, if I say I don't have any water, I would say uh, yoli ain mine. I have no water. Gotcha. Right? Right. But if right. I say this is this is not my car. I would say, Meftahot, Ain Meftahot Shali. This is not my car. But I'm going to use this word, Ain. And of course, after 400 years of slavery and oppression, this word, Ain, has become Ain't. And there's no other explanation for where this word comes from because there is no equivalent for Ain't, for ain't anywhere in English. Now, if, if you say can't, then yeah, can't is cannot, or don't, or wouldn't, or finna, fixing to, you know. I mean, you most of the slang we use, a lot of the slang we use, you can find the variant of it in English. But ain't comes from nowhere. Another one is do. We say do, what's up, you know? And do comes from the Hebrew word dod, which means like partner, or it's a colloquial term for like my uncle or my aunt. You can say do or do da, but of course, after so many years, it's been transliterated into do. So wow. we have these we have these nuances of our language all over the place. That's just two examples. We have them all over the place where we're speaking Hebrew and we don't even know why we're speaking and we don't even know where it comes from. Show me one example of that among all the the, the dozens of nations of Hispanic people. And, and I, I'll renege my point. Can I say something? I, hey, I, I first of all, without him even, I'm gonna I'm I'm get an answer for him. He is now one of our F O P E Hebrew language <laughs> teachers. That's it. <laughs> you can't say <laughs> no. I ain't taking no for an answer. I ain't going for it. I <laughs> <laughs> but let me say this right here. I think this is very important. Think about this, guys. Is what he just said makes sense. Let's just stay with the so-called English, right? Who always, who on the planet be saying, my brother? You find that in the scriptures all the time, brother, right? Who be mm -hmm. talking about, man, I'm going to see my seed, my seed. You hear that all in the scripture, my seed, right? So I, I just look at this stuff, even in, the, in this, this broken language, and they put it in the, uh, translated into English, we still use that Bible terminology with the way we speak. Brother, right. you know, so on. Yeah, you know, so that was beautiful. That was very beautiful. Yeah. 
So, so we, we get into this idea of artifacts, right? Everybody is looking at artifacts. Everybody wants to attribute that these people must be Hebrew because you find artifacts with Hebrew stuff on it. Man, our culture had proliferated the whole world. Look at what the scripture says about Solomon. The Bible doesn't say the, the known world was at peace in the Solomon's days. The Bible says the whole world was at peace in the days of Solomon. Solomon's kingdom was not ignorant of the rest of the world. He, the book of Kings, it talks about how he was bringing in monkeys from places. And th there are no monkeys on the continent of Africa. They have these macaques, which have come over from India, that were part of the trade, because the, the, the monkeys with the tail come from India, right? In Africa, you find what, the, what, what, what zoologists call the great apes. You don't find monkeys. The monkeys in Africa, all of the monkeys, the, 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 the primates with the tails, all of them, every last one of them came later on because of the Spanish and the Europeans traveling around the world, dropping monkeys off the same way they spread pigs everywhere. And you know what? Let me say this. Let me back on that. Oh, uh, Madagascar, right? Madagascar, whatever. You remember the movie? I come to right. find out all the monkeys, they didn't come from there. They didn't come from Madagascar. No, they didn't. They were exactly where you said they came from, right? And they overpopulated the place. But go ahead, go ahead, brother. Go right. Ahead, brother. The, the, there was called an invasive species. Africa, before, be, before the Spanish and before the great partition of Africa, um, the only primates on the continent were the great apes. It was, it was from India and East Asia that all these tailed monkeys and everything came from. And so mm -hmm. when, when, when you're talking about all of these artifacts, the question is not when did they write them? The question is who brought them to those places where we find them? Because just because just because you find them there doesn't mean somebody from there wrote it or made it. They got they got stuff supposedly on the moon and on Mars now. It don't mean Martians made it. We made it and put it there. We took it with us when we went there and we left it there for whomever to find it. And that's what happens. And so you, you go into you you go into um the Aztec Empire or Cancun or one of those uh, great pyramids, you know, and, and you say, oh, uh, they have these inscriptions in Hebrew or they got these stones in Hebrew. Okay, that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, you can speculate as to what that comes from, but it's nothing definitive, you know. There's no telling. First of all, um, you won't even find, like, hard hieroglyphic evidence of Hebrew anywhere in in in, uh, in central or south america there, there there's no there's no chiseled stone rocks built into the pyramids there's no cities laid out a certain way with with names like uh hebrew names all of that stuff is just things that people have speculated and they try to bend the details to fit whatever confirmation bias they want it to fit. Okay. It, 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 it's not good scholarship. It's not good research. And, and that's why the only people it makes sense to is them. Because you let somebody else read it, they're going to twist their face up. Like, what are you talking about? Right. 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 So now, do you want to go into who... Because Let me say this. It's pretty hard to identify because it's, it's many different races in one country because I know it's like yeah. 67 different races in Mexico alone but if you could pinpoint some like what's the difference between a Puerto Rican and a Mexican or what's the difference between a, a, a Mexican and someone from El Salvador and can we uh, identify them through their lineage 
through the language, you know, uh, because what you broke down is, is really profound. So how else can we identify who these people really are? Okay, so, so there are some uniquenesses or unique differences between all of the Latin speaking countries, okay? Um, the, the main tribe in Mexico before the conquistadors got there was the Aztec. And the Aztec were not the only indigenous tribe in Mexico. There were several different tribes in Mexico because the Aztecs were going to war with, with some people. You know, there were some tribes they did not like. And so when the Spanish came, first of all, you got to understand, Spain did not send their explorers and their great philosophers and anthropologists and, and men of renown to, to the New World. No, they went and they cleaned out their prison houses and they sent these rapists and marauders and people that ate people's flesh and people that had a proclivity to violence they, 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 they basically emptied their trash on the Nina, the Penta, and the Santa Maria. Wow. And they, yeah. and they sent somebody that was a little more educated, but just as crazy in the head as they were, this guy called Columbo, Columbus. And Columbo is a name which means colonizer. Right. Columbus was not his last name. Columbus was the title of the occupation that he had for the for for the Spanish and Portuguese crown. Wait, I'm here, brother. His, his name was Christoph the the colonizer, and we changed the word colonizer to Columbus. So he came to the Bahamas. And in the Bahamas, the, the Indian tribe that we know was in the Bahamas was called the Taino Indians. The Taino Indians. Those, right. are, those Indians are, are from where the Puerto Ricans and the Dominicans come from. The okay. Taino Indians who were overthrown, who were killed and murdered, and then those men, those European Spanish men raped their women and made children from them, and those children became known as mestizos. And if you looked at the if you look at the history of Puerto Rico and, and those places, you'll see a hierarchy of the, the the Spanish men were always at the top, and then below them was all was the mestizos, which were the half Spanish, half indigenous, and then below them were the full indigenous. And then when the African slaves got there the slaves were the lowest level of that hierarchy. Now, what happened with places like Haiti and the Bahamas and Jamaica, right, is these slaves rebelled. And because these slaves rebelled and, took, and the European and the Mestizo were either totally eradicated or they fled for their lives to other islands, that's why places like the Bahamas and Jamaica and Haiti have so many African Americans, but also, or African, Afro Caribbeans, but also, that's, that's why they're also the three poorest countries in the Caribbean, because the other island nations have ostracized those three nations because they don't want them Hebrews having no power. Right. right. All right. So, so. When, when they came to the mainland or Central South America and the slaves got here, of course, we were the ones in the sugar plantations in Brazil. Um, we were the ones in the sugar plantations. And of course, they were raping and murdering us there too. And so you, you had three different ethnic groups in the New World or in the Western Hemisphere. It was the Europeans, the indigenous Mongoloid Indian tribes, and you had the African slaves or the Israelite slaves. Now, I was telling one of my students this. She was she was eating some chips, like some potato chips, and they were or they were made from banana, plantain, and they had like the Mexican spices on them. 
And the name of the, the brand, it wasn't Doritos. It was called Zambos, Z-A-M-B-O-S. And I said, do you even understand the significance of you being Honduran eating Zambos, which are banana chips? And she was like, no, I don't understand. I say, well, first of all, if you can look at yourself compared to this other Honduran girl, you obviously are not fully Honduran because you got some African in you. Secondly, the plantains, those bananas, are not native to Honduras. They're native of West Africa, and the Spanish brought them over on the ships. Right. And then the word Zambo is the term, like nigger, that the Spanish gave to the people who had a black parent and a indigenous mongoloid parent. Mm. So here you have a half Honduran, half Israelite, Spanish speaking girl eating banana chips from Africa. And the name brand on the chips is the name that they gave to African, uh, to half African, half mongoloid people in the new world. Just like Aunt your mama. Just like Angel Mama. And, and, and they don't even they don't even teach that history to the people in Central and South America. So it's no wonder they don't know that they're Mongoloids. Those that right. are Mongoloids. Right. They don't know the history because they don't teach the history. They even bubble white on their uh, school documents. You go through all their student records, they got a bubble white. Why do they bubble white? And then it gives you Hispanic or non-Hispanic. But they put white. And they got to put Hispanic. And if they, they bubble Hispanic, they got to put white. If they bubble non-Hispanic, then they say, well, well, let me look at you and see which one of these you would fall under. Pacific Islander or Afro-American. Black. I know my sister because, told me years ago. My sister told me years ago. She said, you know what, Q? She said, fluctuation of the H, right, that's coming over here. She said they're going to be, because a uh, uh, so-called Caucasian population is going down, they're going to uh, uh, make them, integrate them, and call them white people. I was like, oh, no, 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 but she was 100% right. Which, oh, no, no. They, they, they definitely, they, see, this is why they are trying to make abortion illegal in, in the 50 states because they don't want white people destroying their babies because they are dwindling in population. That's why they, you know, you, you hear them joke on TV, they make like in the, in the, in the, in the, in the sitcoms, they, they be joking about, you know, I'm ovulating right now, let's go ahead and make a baby. They gotta wait for a seasons and cycles to, to, re, to reproduce because two recessive gene traits do not attach the way dominant gene traits right. attach to each other. Mm -hmm. And if you look on them in a microscope, you'll even see that there is like a receptor like this, and then you have a, a, a thing like this, and let me see if I can do it with my phone. And so they will, they will uh, join like that. The, the receptor will catch the, the, the node on the cell, and right. they attach. And when, when you have two when you have two recessive gene traits, they both have receptors, it's harder for them to attach to each other. And that's why European and Caucasian people have a hard time reproducing. Right. And, and, and that's why every so often they want to marry a person of color because that invigorates their gene pool. And, and that's the actual term that geneticists use when they talk about... Um, the introduction of something that causes the conception to be easier is called a revigor invigoration. It invigorates their gene pool and it gives them something to attach onto so that they can continue their race. And I've had, I've even had white people tell me, bro, I'm just trying to survive for my race because they know that they are dwindling in population. Now you and me, bro, I'm afraid to, let a woman drink after me, she might end up pregnant. You know what I'm saying? We don't have right. we don't have no trouble. Right. We don't have no trouble reproducing. Right. right. You know? Right. And 
usually the more you oppress us, look what happened in Egypt. The more the Pharaoh oppressed us, the more our population exploded. That's, hey, look, that's the only thing that made us happy. I'm <laughs> telling you. So, hey, look, I'm telling you. Say, so, you know what? We didn't work. Hey, babe, what are we going to do? Well, let's do this. You know what I'm saying? Let's make us feel yep. good. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, yeah, so, let's get down to what my grandma would say. Let's get down to the nitty gritty, right? Uh, to this yeah. part, who certain people are, right? So, uh, you broke down certain parts of uh, the people in Puerto Rico, right? So, mm -hmm. let's, go, let's go with so-called people in Mexico who saying they Israel or saying they Ishakar. And then I'm going I'm to uh, land me back on some things. So, any, any one of them of your choosing. Okay, so so so, so you got nine to choose. Well, 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 well here, here's here's the problem I have. For 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 you to assert that Issachar is the Mexicans is to assert that the Spanish and whoever else was involved with the slave trade came to terms with each other and said. I'm only going to take this tribe and you only take that tribe and we're going to keep them in their neat little compartments and we're not going to intermix them. I mean, come on, man. That, 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 that Gentile didn't do that. Right. Right. Let's take Ishikar and screw that all Gentile the Ishikar in Mexico. Let's take Zebulon and yeah. then let's screw that tribe and, and place them over here, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, you go ahead. What is more likely is that one of us, somebody from one west or somebody from another camp, somebody made those neat little compartments because it was profound in that moment or it was about building the numbers or building his rapport with his people. And it was one of those little hooks that everybody got snagged on and we, we all went with it and, and took off running. You know, um, there is no scholarship behind it at all. And, and, and there is no... 100% right. Just like Hosea, they, uh, chapter uh, 7, they try to say that meant Puerto Ricans. That's the breakdown of the chart. Uh, that's what that meant. Come to find out it has yeah. nothing to do with that. Right. Nothing. Right. But go ahead, I'm sorry, I'm, I want you to go ahead because I'm cutting you off. It has nothing to do with that. No, no, it's fine. It's, it's totally fine. Um, so what that you have to really understand scholarship and and the reason for the the reason why you can't plagiarize in, in grade school they have a, there's reasons for those things and just because um, white people made these rules doesn't mean that the science behind it is irrelevant you know what I'm saying? I'm going to give you a perfect example. You cannot make an assertion way out left field and, 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 and say that this assertion is a fact and then try to fill in the gaps between where you are and where that assertion is. You know? That's called speculation. And then everything, once you, once you do that, let's say you're at step one, and you jump way up to step 10, and then you got to fill in steps two through nine, every one of those steps is going to be a speculation. And it's, it's not good scholarship. It makes more sense to start from where you are, and rather than seeking to get to a certain point, you just let the research take you where it's going to take you. Right. And right. You, can have a, you can have a hypothesis, but... In science, your hypothesis is only right 50% of the time. The other 50% of the time, your hypothesis is wrong. Right. And, and they, are, they have made this hypothesis about the nine tribes, and everything that they have shown as far as evidence only confirms their hypothesis. And when, when, when somebody like me, who is a career researcher, and an educator when I follow the appropriate scientific method to try to reproduce 
the same conclusion that they've come to, I can't find it anywhere. Right. Okay. I, I, wa I want you to go into going to identify these people, but I guess I'm going to ask a few questions they want me to ask. Uh, and I want my brother Zab to come on, brother, uh, from Baltimore. I want you to come on and speak. But uh, let's, let's – uh, wait a minute. It's typing, so it's hard for me to – he said, Ishikar is Judah brother in scriptures, so Ishikar is black. Cunt. Uh, my brother Shah Sham from FOP says, who was the slaves Columbus took on the ships back to Spain? Because through my research, it was black people, but I'll let you answer that. That's one part. Who was the slaves that Columbus took back to Spain, if you know anything about that? And the other question is, who is Japheth today? Who was the slaves that Columbus took back to uh uh, Spain, if you know anything about that, and who is Jacket today? Okay, so um, if you were to go to Spain right now, you would not find any Mexicans in Spain. <laughs> All of the Mexicans are in Mexico and in the United States. There are no Mexicans in Spain unless they're there on vacation or something like that. You, I mean, you can't say there ain't, ain't one. There's probably one or two, but it's, it's, it's nobody else. Um, now, if you want to know, Christopher Columbus came to the New World. His navigator was an African Fulani. So that's that term that we talked about yesterday, Fulani. Right. right. The, his, his navigator was an African Fulani from Sierra Leone. Fulani in their language even means seafarer. Mm. They make ships all the time because there are some islands right there called the Canary Islands and they went back and forth to the Canary Islands all the time. Okay. Now, it was later on that more um, Spanish started bringing Africans to the New World, and then from there they took some Africans into into uh, into into Europe. That is how some of those African Hebrew Israelites in Europe got there. Like if you go to London town, Northern London, Southern London, you find us over there as well. Um, I'm sorry, brother. That's my daughter calling. I know she probably down. She's probably downstairs. That's cool. Come in. Sorry, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's my daughter. Go ahead. Yeah. There's a rapper called okay, they, okay. Tiny Temple. I'm going to take you out and bring you back in because when she called, it made the sound go down. So I'm going to take you out and okay. bring you right back in, all right? Okay. Sorry about that, everybody. Just when it was getting good, right? <laughs> Just when it was getting good.